Hello, and welcome to Composer's Voice. This episode of Composer's Voice, we are featuring the performers Linda Chatterton and Matthew McCright. Linda and Matt will be performing the works of composers J. Anthony Gatch and Ulf Gran. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. It's great to see you guys. Thank you for coming to New York. Of course. Thank you for inviting us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, so, Linda, why don't we start with you? Why don't you say your name and who are you? What do you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Linda Chatterton. I'm a flutist. Um, I am a soloist, so I don't play in an orchestra. I don't um, teach at a university. Um, but what I do is perform in recitals. I'm kind of, what would you say, sort of a, a world freelancer. <laughs> Anytime somebody wants to hire me and it's a really cool event or a great location, um, I just love to do it. And I'm fortunate at this point in my career that I can do that. I'm Matt. Uh, well, I'm Matthew McCright. I am the pianist in our flute and piano duo. Um, I am a professor at Carleton College in Minnesota. I also reside in Minneapolis with the same city as Linda does. And I have primarily been a contemporary music specialist as a soloist. Most of my traditional music has been in the chamber music realm. But mostly I have found that my career took off because of living composers. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the duo, what's the name, what do you guys do, how do you do it? Okay, uh, well, we started uh, in 2009, and it was basically because I was looking for an amazing pianist who could do contemporary music as well as stuff before that. Right, right. And I heard you play at an American Composers Forum concert and just went up to you after the show and we started chatting and hit it off and started doing concerts and it just kind of grew organically from there. Right. Awesome. I mean, we do a lot of contemporary music, but we don't just do contemporary music. And we like programming things that are sort of a mix um, of, you know, traditional and not so traditional works. I think that's also piggybacking on kind of our career together as a duo. Our programmatic ideals are the same. We want um, certainly variety for ourselves to play, but we also want variety for the audiences. Mm -hmm. um, our job, of course, is not just to educate an audience. We're much more about kind of introducing them and kind of bringing them along in a new music path. Because most of them are love new music. They just aren't aware of it, that every film they've ever seen mm -hmm. has a contemporary score. With contemporary sounds, often extended techniques are being used in those soundtracks. They have no idea that all along they've been kind of seduced right. into liking new music. Most people are like actually pretty cool. Oh, right, they can right. play something like just completely crazy and people are on board. Well, it gets to be a discovery process. Yeah, yeah right. exactly, you know? yeah. exactly. And, uh, and people, that's what they're coming out to, to discover, to mm -hmm. be entertained, yes. Yes. to absorb yeah. whatever new, mm -hmm. I mean, they're making the yeah. effort. Yes, yeah. it's an event and it's a live music and it's a communication. And um, I think that's one of the things that we like love about our jobs is right. that we get to be a part of that. I think what's really fascinating about this program is that every single piece is so different mm -hmm. from the other. Um, like, I just think like, for example, Jay's piece is just like really, it has like a lot of like color and like um, brightness and sort of like bits and pieces of like different color and energy and stuff like that, where you contrast it to Alf's piece, which is just these washes of color and sound. Um, so each composer kind of has their own voice. And it's really um, neat as a performer to be able to kind of uh, really dive into it and also just showcase it for the audience too.
J. Anthony Gatch. I'm a composer. I've tried to uh, actually earn my living as a composer all my, uh, throughout my, what I jokingly call my career. And uh, there were years when I was actually pretty successful earning a living as a composer. Then, of course, I uh, earned my living through fellowships and commissions and grants. And I uh, lived in Europe for a long time on, com on uh, various fellowships. My wife and I were in Germany for a while. We were in Italy for a while. Rome had the Rome Prize. Um, then we went to, we lived in London for quite a bit. My, I had been dragging my wife around Europe in my career. She dragged me to London for, uh, we lived there for nine years, ten years. Wow. And where the kids were born there. And around 2000, we came back to the States and we've been there ever since. What's Europe like for a composer? America, an expat, well, not an expat, right? Well, I was you know? an expat for about 15 years, yeah. Um, I was attracted to go to Germany initially because my entire education, my musical, my compositional education, the background was 12-tone atonality, the 12-tone school. And I was particularly interested in the Darmstadt school. So, of course, I wanted to go to Germany and experience some of that. Um, I experienced it. And I've been spending the rest of my career trying to write myself out of 12-tone <laughs> tonality. <laughs> so I've, very, I've gone down various pathways and explored different aesthetic alternatives. When I had the Rome Prize in, in, uh, in Rome, Italy, you know, Europe was uh, it's rather doctrinaire. These are 12-tone composers, and this is what was in the air, and this was what was being supported by the government. So if you wanted to have any success, you pretty much had to write in that style. Right. So when I was in, in Rome, yeah, we were still writing in that style. I came back to the United States for maybe two or three years before going to London. And at that point, I decided I was going to stop. I was going to look for alternatives. And that's what I've been doing now for about the last 25 years, looking for alternatives, looking for different pathways. And it's been an interesting experience. Finding something new. Well, t tell well, us. Well, I'd find lots of stuff new. I mean, for example, the piece that Linda and Matthew are going to play is uh, is influenced by the uh, by an aesthetic by the I don't know if you know the Italian uh, writer, novelist, poet, philosopher Italo Calvino. He had some suggestions and a point of view that he wished to express to future artists, and his notion was that. Forget about the 20th century. The 20th century was noisy and it was aggressive and it was, he used the words revving and roaring, and of course the, the first half of the 20th century was absolutely catastrophic. He would say that 20th century artists were too heavily influenced by this uh, aesthetic, by the reality of those times. His suggestion was to future artists was to create your own space, create a space that essentially is free of the heaviness of reality, a space that is light, a space that's quick, a space that's clear, clar he emphasized clarity, quickness, lightness, uh, a multiplicity of, of, uh, of ideas. And it would be a kind of aesthetic that you would offer the audience that would sort of float above reality. It's a sort of a space above, you know, if this is reality, then he's saying, here's a space up here, offer this to your audience. It's light. And so thus, the name of my piece is La Leggerezza della Musica, which translates as the lightness of music. Doesn't mean it's frivolous, a frivolous kind of lightness. It means that it's a lightness that hovers above the reality that we live in and offers a space that's free, that's free from the heaviness of reality that seems to escape gravity. So that's what this piece was about. And I wrote a number of pieces uh, under this quote, this sort of Calvino aesthetic.
The inspiration to this piece came to Ulf Gron when he was looking out his window and seeing snow lying on magnolias. Ulf Gron was a Swedish composer who moved to the United States in 1972 with his wife Barbara. He was a prolific and award-winning composer, and his compositions ranged from solo to chamber ensemble to electronic works to orchestra. I met Ulf at Scandinavia House in New York City. I was attending a new music event and struck up a conversation with Ulf after the show was over. We had a great conversation talking about life, music, and I urged him to become a part of Vox Novus, just like I do with any composer. Little did I know that this was going to be the start of a great adventure over many years. Ulf had participated in almost every program that Vox Novus had to offer. To be honest with you, in the beginning, I wasn't sure if Ulf liked me or not. Most of our conversations were done on email, and I wasn't really sure if I just wasn't understanding what he was saying, or if he didn't approve or didn't like how I was doing things. I just had no idea. I would slowly learn that this was just Ulf's personality, and over the many years, we would be great colleagues and friends. I think my favorite description of Ulf is that he was known in many circles for his arid wit. Unlike his humor, his inkwell for penning new music never ran dry. And he never stopped writing. His understated, mirthful spirit will live ever on through his music. And now I would like to introduce his work, Magnolias and Snow, 
performed by the flutist Linda Chatterton and pianist Matthew McCright. Thank you. 